It's Monday, December 4th, 2023. And uh, you can see it's dark out here. It's, it's of course, it's not really that early. It's just before seven o'clock. And uh, it's just that it's, we don't get much daylight this time of year. I got the diesel going, warming up. And uh, I got it hooked onto the trailer here. And I got 200, and guess what? 204 covers. I don't know what, I just can't count right. But I was just doing a walk around that <clears throat> all my lights are working. And everything is good. You always got to be safe, right? It's a good trailer. It has nice LED lights. Truck's in good shape. So it's going to be a long day. It's going to be seven hours of driving, probably. Because uh, I'm going to go to the dipper and drop this stuff off. And then I'm, I'm continuing on an uh, hour and a half or so to another guy. Just got some stuff to pick up. I thought, you know, it's a long ways out, but I'm most of the way there. Or at least I'm more than half of the way there by the time I get to the dipper. So today is the day. So it's going to be a long day and that's why I wanted to get going a little bit earlier than sometimes I do. So I made the effort and here we are. Anyway, as I say, I usually don't update while I'm on the road and, and whatnot, but sometimes, you don't know, maybe I will. We'll see. I'll let you know when I get back. Hopefully uh, everything goes well and like I say to my wife, I hope I have an uneventful day. <laughs> that's what you want when you're on the road. Uneventful. All right, you have a great day. It's Tuesday, December 5th, 2023. Well, I had a fairly uneventful trip out west and back. Uh, it was a long drive. I, I went to two locations and the farthest one was three and a half hour drive from here. So we're looking at a good solid seven hours of driving and overall I was gone about 11 hours. So I'm still really tired. Um, day before I guess that would have been Sunday my wife helped me dump a bunch of pails these pails are empty now and uh, all the jars that were in here and everything and look at how much syrup is in this tank I'm going to end up with the full tank of syrup again <laughs> maybe more who knows there was uh, there was maybe this much syrup in the tank when I started and I couldn't lift that I don't think I'm moving this anywhere. I can probably drag it on the cement, but once it gets outside, I might damage it if I'm dragging it around. So a good buddy of mine has a, has a tote that he's not using. And uh, I'm going to go pick that up hopefully today. And what I'll do is I'll set that outside and I'll go out and get my 100 foot serving hose. And I'll put my, this is going to be messy and stinky because I'm going to put my pump in here it up to this tank and pump it out into the into his tote outside then likely I'll, I'll go, end up pumping it out of his tote back into this one once I get it moved so it's going to be a, a real <laughs> a real performance to to get this out of here I should be just I should have had his tote in here and just dumped all my bales into his tote or just done it outside like a big boy would. I hate working outside. And the syrup is, you know, it gets thick when it's cold. So anyway, most of these pails you see here have to be dumped yet. And there's another skid outside needs to be dumped. So I don't know if I'm going to have enough room. But we'll keep going regardless. So what else is going on today? I finished the covers, delivered them yesterday. And they're, they're dipped already. And so customers should be picking up there. Um, I've got some honey to pack. I'm going to pack some honey for, for some local customers. So I got to do that. And oh heavens, I want to get honey in the cabinet for warming up for packing. Uh, there's just so many things to do. I still need to unload the truck and disconnect the trailer and all that. So there's all kinds of little jobs. It's a bunch of little jobs today. So anyway, I don't think much of it's interesting, but maybe I'll, I'll try to show you some of it for uh, interest sake. Cause uh, you know, I really appreciate your interest in this stuff because I don't find it very interesting for the most part. Um, but a lot of you, you do from your comments and whatnot. The wood shop is, you know, a little more spacious now that I don't have 
material for 200 covers in here. And, uh, but no more woodshop work for a little while. Uh, so we'll catch up with you later. It's Wednesday, December 6th, 2023. Um, I've, I've been doing a ton of small jobs lately around here. Not very interesting stuff, but getting uh, some, some uh, loose ends tied up, as they say. And one of these jobs is this syrup tank, and it's not uh, really a small job because I've been at it for quite a few days now. I need to finish because in order to make the syrup flow nicely, I keep it warm in this building. I don't like keeping it this warm. Uh, it just costs a lot of money, that's all. So, uh, yeah, so the, the tank is, is pretty full, I guess. It's full up to here. And uh, that's, that's really full. <laughs> Uh, I put a gallon of Pro Health in there now, and that's you can tell the floor is sticky. That's this Man Lake version of Honey Be Healthy, um, and it does say for uh, 50, uh, 250 gallons of syrup, it says 1.25 gallons of of this uh, Pro Health, and that's one gallon. So I guess I'm just under the prescribed amount, but I'm confident that that's going to preserve the syrup. And, and that's why I'm putting it in. That's the only reason I'm putting it in, because I know ProHealth, from my experience, does preserve syrup. And I'm 100% confident that that's what's going to happen here. So in the spring, I may have to dilute this a bit. Um, I do find that the bees do slow down on, on taking the feed. Uh, I don't believe it's a feed stimulant. Maybe I'm doing it wrong but uh, I'll either feed it straight or, or cut it with some new syrup in the spring. Now, this is too heavy for me to lift now, so what I did was I borrowed a tote from my buddy. Um, the irony is I had two totes and I found I wasn't using both, so I sold one to my buddy. Uh, so he just picked it up not long ago. And we hadn't finished the transaction, so I phoned him up. I said, can I have that tote back for a little while? And uh, so all I need to do is I need to get my pump on this one and uh, get my 100-foot hose, and then I can put the tote that I just got from him out in the yard within 100 feet, and I can pump all the syrup out of here into that one. Then I can grab this with my tractor, take it outside, and I may just pump it again back into, back into this one for uh, for the winter so he can have his tote back um, he's going to make a syrup mixing system like i have with the the hoses and whatnot and i told him that i would put that together for him as a thank you if he wants me to and so he didn't turn that down and we'll have to talk about what he wants there yeah so this is this is all that's happening here uh it, it's just grabbing the pails and some are not very full and a lot of them actually have water in them because if they sit outside, the water goes down through the, the hole in the top. And this one, this one's actually water. Uh, you can just tell because of the viscosity difference that that's water. And so I just pour that outside. And that's, that's about it. I can kind of tell by weight sometimes. This one's, this one's heavier. And so it might be that, that syrup, definitely syrup. And you can just kind of, you know, tell what it sounds like in there. You know, water is far thinner than the syrup. And I just dump it in the tank. There's no rocket science there. So there's some ice in this one, which is good because syrup doesn't freeze. It'll get super thick, but it doesn't freeze. So the water is frozen and that's good because that separates the syrup from the water. And that can sit there and it'll get cleaned out in the spring. Yeah. Then the pails go on the skid over there and wrap them up with some plastic and stick them in a the shed for the winter. And that's it. That's all that's going on here right now. Um, I'm trying to prepare 
for uh, making a drive tomorrow to some of my stores. Uh, some of my, uh, say my rural stores, you know, you hear me talk about going to Winnipeg a lot, and I, and I do uh, take honey into stores in Winnipeg and customers uh, directly, but I also service stores in towns around here. So I'm going to make a drive out and just make sure they're stocked before the Christmas season gets real busy and uh, perhaps I won't be able to get out. So that's what I'm prepping for now. And I put 600 pounds of honey in the cabinet yesterday, but I didn't turn it right up. I only turned it up to about room temperature uh, just to hold the honey um, because uh, I want to take it for packing, but I'm not sure when I can. I'm not sure when I can due to my schedule and do the packer schedule. So that might not go in before the new year. Uh, I really hope it does. Um, I would love to get one more round before Christmas, but I don't know. Because of the Christmas season, they're awful busy too, so they can't necessarily fit me in. Uh, which I understand. I completely understand. It doesn't change the logistics of what I'm up against here, but I completely understand the situation. I get in situations like that too, and I completely understand the situation that they're in. So it's just, uh, you know, it's just normal. Have to have, have to have compassion on everybody's business model and, and just do what you can do and try not to get too bent out of shape when things maybe don't go the way you think they should go, because uh, it is what it is. Oh, today, it's four degrees out today. It's uh, about one o'clock right now. And it's four degrees. I think it was going to be five or something. Uh, so, you know, the barn fan is going full blast again. Um, which, you know, it's it's been cooling. So, again, it's all that thermal mass in there. The air might might warm up, but a lot of that heat in that air that comes into the building now... Um, will be absorbed into the thermal mass, the honey, the concrete, every everything that's in that building has to be, uh, has to have a temperature rise. So that's where the energy goes. So it's not quite as difficult a situation as it is earlier on in the season when everything in there is maybe a little bit warmer from the, you know, the season, because I don't have a way to refrigerate that building. There's no way I can do that. Uh, so it's been cold. It's been, you know, running, three and four degrees, which is nice. I think I had it set at three or three and a half. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm confident it's going to be fine. It'll be warm for a couple of days and then it goes back down again. But wow, 6th of December and, and I might just be barbecuing for supper. I might put some meat on the grill and, and make some because it's beautiful. I'm, I'm working outside just as you see me in my t-shirt. Uh, so very, very nice December. If it never got any worse than this, I wouldn't complain at all. Um, and again, I don't mind the cooler temperatures when, when things are frozen, it's nice because the ground is frozen. You can drive just about anywhere you want. Um, but I'm not a big fan of snow. I just hate snow. I do not like snow at all. I don't have any use for snow, but again, if we have no snow, the frost goes deep and then things start to freeze up because in this part of the world all of our water lines and utilities and stuff are six to eight feet down so they don't freeze and if we have no snow sometimes those start to freeze uh, so that's always a, a thing but I digress and I'm just going to get at this dumping the syrup so I can get this out of the shop um, and and clean up here a little bit and get ready for production here after the new year because I won't likely get much done before New Year now. Um, and yeah, tomorrow, maybe I'll be going to stores if things work out and just take a little drive and use my day that way. That's kind of enjoyable. If it's nice weather, it's nice. Just drive down the highway and go visit people. Anyway, I'll leave you with that. Thanks for watching. I'm done dumping the pails. And that toad is nearly full. I, you know, I'll bet you I didn't use any syrup at all out of that toad. That cost me, as I recall, $1,800. And so I want to make sure I get to use it. <clears throat> That's why I'm going through all this bother. So <clears throat> I need to pump this out. I've got the pump from the... 
honey house where it was stored. It all hooked up here again. I love these camlock couplers. They're so civilized. They make a really good seal. Very easy to use. Very reliable. that I have to get the hundred foot hose put on there now I go on and on about this Honda pump or Honda motor anyway and uh, this is a reason, one reason why <clears throat> I do because uh, last time I ran this, well, it would have been nearly six weeks ago. This one's choke. run the pressure too high for the the hose because the syrup is still a little cool and uh, you know I can't run the, the pressure up because it's not really a pressure rated hose it overwhelms pretty easy I think about 50 psi is is about all I would hazard with the hose and from my experience because if you recall I did blow that hose out last summer so that gave me a good idea of what I can expect of it but that's going just fine it runs unattended as long as this stays in the tank. Of course, my luck, it's gonna come out of the tank and go all over the ground the, the way, you know, it's been going for me. So I better watch this. All right, I've got all the syrup into this tank here. And now I wanna pump it back into that one. And what I've done is just take the, the outlet plumbing off of the syrup mixing tank and left the valve closed and to pump it back. Now, I'm gonna to have to be careful with the RPM because I don't have a, a, a bypass to moderate the pressure in the outlet hose. Uh, so I'll just play it by ear and use the RPM to, to protect the hose. So I'm gonna set this wrench down and then we'll do this all over again. my son here 
It's not very late, but uh, it is the uh, 6th of December. It's only 3.30, and another 30 to 45 minutes, uh, that sun will be down. So I wanted to get this a nice warm day today. I wanted to get this done today because if the syrup cools off too much, you know, as anybody's guess, if I can pump it. You heard earlier when I opened that valve and the, and the pump primed and got a hold of that syrup, that's a six and a half horsepower pump, and that really, really bogged down and got to work on it. So it's it's working really, really well. I want to get my buddy's tank back to him, and, and that's really what's pushing the timeline here. Uh, I think tomorrow it's going to be warm too, and I'm going to have to wash out the garage of syrup everywhere. It's terrible. You can see I've deadheaded this with this valve. I just unthreaded it from the other piece of the syrup mixing thing. Oh yeah, this is working good. I've got about 42, 43 PSI going. And i uh, got a good flow. So I'm just going to monitor this, make sure nothing crazy happens. And another half an hour we'll be done this job. It's Friday, December 8, 2023. The weather this week has been very warm. Uh, it's not been snowing or raining until now. It just started snowing very, very lightly. But the temperature is warm enough. I don't think there's going to be any accumulation to speak of. And what I've got going here right now is I picked up um, when I went over to the, the dipper place uh, they they're the ones that manufacture the frames and the boxes that I buy and so they have this nice <clears throat> uh, 1 by 10 uh, and it's 7 8 thick material and I decided that I wanted some of that so uh, it comes in 16s they're good people they'll cut in 8s for me if I want but I just decided I'll get the 16s I had my trailer so I'll bring them in here and I'm going to cut them to about 20 and a half and what I'm going to make out of those is I'm going to make uh, what I call um, long shims for the 10 frame covers. It's actually the same shim for a six frame cover or four frame cover. It doesn't matter because they're all, you know, 20 and an eighth boxes. And the reason I want to do that, I can't really uh, give you a visual on that, but I, I will in a minute. Here, I'll go and get a cover and show you what I'm trying to accomplish. But I just wanted to fill you in on, on how the bee barn was doing this week. It's been very warm. And uh, hopefully you can see this. So, okay. Now it's reflecting camera back to camera. <clears throat> so you can just see the, the high and low temperatures for this week in the barn. And, and you can see yesterday it got quite warm. Um, but it topped out at 6. So this, this is 6 here. Uh, so it's not too bad. And I think it's holding its own so far today, but it's sure running on high speed. So, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy the warm weather, 8th of December. I had a, a Facebook memory from seven years ago come up and, and I was uh, barbecuing some steaks on the 7th of December. And I might yet cook some burgers. <laughs> I got some burgers I want to use up. Okay, this is a six frame cover, but it, it, there's no difference in what I'm trying to accomplish. So one thing I want to do is I've always wanted to get rid of this little gap. This, it's, it's only aesthetic. It just, just looks, when you look at it from the side, you think, well, it doesn't meet. It doesn't really matter because this, this shim here is the structural part and it keeps, you know, bugs from going in there and stuff like that. So it really doesn't matter except for just what you're going to see. But what I'm trying to accomplish is uh, you've seen me assemble these and, and do my best to, to get everything nice and flush on one side and then give it a trim on the other side. 
I'd really love to trim that twice. I'd love to trim that again and make both sides perfect. So the only way to do that is I still have to flush one side really nice so that I can run that along the fence and make the first trim. But then I want to turn it around now that that's nicely trimmed, size it back by trimming this side again, just to clean that up and make it really perfectly smooth and make the, all the material fit just perfectly together. Now, um, I think this one, you can see the difference between this shim and this one. This one's been trimmed. Okay, you can see that that's a little narrower than this one. Not a big deal. Doesn't really hurt it functionally, uh, but I'd like to stay at uh, three quarter wide there. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to start with the pieces wider. Something like, oh, an eighth of an inch wider than three quarter, which is, well, if you do the math, it's seven eighths. Guess what? Seven eighths material. So I'm thinking I'm gonna, I got that seven eighths material. I'm gonna slice that up into, <laughs> I'm gonna slice all this lumber up into half inch strips. <laughs> uh, I bought a new uh, rip blade, which is what you need for this. And it's a thin kerf blade. So I'll lose less uh, material up the pipe into the sawdust bag. <clears throat> That'll save me money over the long term. And it was a very inexpensive blade too. So that's really a win-win, right? So anyway, I'll make both of these seven eighths and I'll flush up one side on, on assembly really nice. Then I'll trim the next side. <clears throat> My final size for a 10 frame cover is 16 and 5 eighths. So my first trim will be 16 and 3 quarter. My second trim will be 16 and 5 eighths. So take an eighth each time um, because then I'll end up with 3 quarter, right? Uh, so, so my overall width for my my uh, end cleats, my top cleats, my plywood, then needs to be 16 and 7 eighths. So when I cut my plywood up and do all my, um, all my cleats, I have to go 16 and 7 eighths. The one thing that really, <clears throat> really uh, locks in the, the width of, of these, uh, these uh, shims from here to here is this, this short shim, I call it because these shims will butt up against that. So I have to make sure that, that this is, you know, do the math, 16 and 5 eighths less 3 quarter and 3 quarter inch and a half, right? So, so that's the math for, for how big this piece is. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish here today. And uh, what I want to do is because these are 16 foot pieces, uh, I'm not going to do all of the the ripping and everything today but because these are 16 foot pieces I'm just going to cut them all up to 20 and a half deck them onto a skid and shove them in the shed and then we'll get into that in uh, the new year and make shims out of those and uh, as they say Bob's your uncle so let's get to work The lumber is a little, a little bit uh, rough. It's uh, it's not edged, so it's not made really straight on the edges, and that's why you see this the saw is binding a little bit. Not a big deal, but you just have to be ready for it because the the board doesn't fit against the fence perfectly, and when I cut it, 
sometimes when I cut it, then the board will, will close in like this and the gap will close around the blade. So you just lift it out and make the gap as big as the blade again. It's one of the more dangerous things uh, using a saw, but it's really not dangerous at all if, if you're expecting it, if you're ready for it. It's just one of those times when you, you listen to the tool and the tool will tell you if something's going wrong. Because normally you won't hear that, <clears throat> that binding and slowing down of the saw that you're hearing. See, I can, I can kind of force it through, but you can only go so far with that.
this is where I get fussy. I'm going to make an executive decision. Uh, I don't know if it's going to work out for me. Because that's... I thought I could maybe get rid of this section here that has these nasty knots. <clears throat> Let's try. I don't think it's going to work. No, it's not going to make any difference at all. There's no way I can save that because there's not enough room between there and there. Well, I can make this not show up in the next piece. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to have an off cut here. And part of this knot is going to show up in the next piece. So it wasn't much of an effect, but at least I've eliminated that. So I'm just cleaning up here. Um, yesterday, I got the pressure washer, the little one, the little Karcher Electric that I bought. And it definitely has a lot less power than my gas powered one, but it's a lot easier to drag out and put away. Uh, so I got that out and I, I washed all the syrup off the floor. Um, so it's fairly clean in here now. I didn't, you know, my goal wasn't to wash the floor per se. My goal was to get the syrup off it. So that just went out the door. And as you can see, there's lots of stuff lying around. And uh, I've got my, got my syrup in the tank over here, which is nice. And I can take Buddy's tank back to him, or if he wants me to build that mixing system, I will. Um, what else am I doing? I'm sorting honey around. I'm getting honey ready for a market next week. Uh, doing a, a market at a senior center, another one of these. Um, I did one a couple weeks ago. And they're kind of fun. They're not big money makers, but it's fun to talk to the people there. And uh, and another day to deliver in Winnipeg next week. Uh, I have yet to go to the stores. I didn't go to the stores yesterday because uh, the forecaster said it was going to be bad weather. I didn't want to be out on the roads, you know, when I didn't have to be in bad weather. Well, the weather was beautiful. But today is kind of dicey, so I'm not going to go today either. We'll see. We'll go another day anyway so thanks for dropping in and uh thanks for putting up with me this week not much going on and i uh, hope you enjoy this video and have a really great weekend and take care and have fun <laughs>